Why are you unharmed? My mother-in-law had an accident while driving my husband's car and was transported by ambulance while unconscious. The doctor said tonight was critical. And when I contacted my husband, he responded with, Why are you unharmed? Realizing his slip of the tongue, my husband tried to cover it up, but I couldn't hear anything beyond that. I managed to maintain composure and informed my husband only about the hospital, quietly ending the call. At that moment, memories of my husband's unnatural behavior flooded my mind. Later, a single email on his phone revealed a shocking truth. My name is Charlotte Brown. Fourteen years ago, I married my husband who worked at an auto repair company, and at his request, I became a full-time homemaker. However, the once-kind husband gradually revealed his true nature. After our daughter was born, he started verbally abusing me, calling me a parasite leeching off his earnings at every opportunity. Despite growing frustration, I couldn't work outside the home while caring for our young daughter, so I endured his behavior. Eventually, when our daughter entered elementary school, I managed to secure a part-time job. A year later, my work performance was recognized at the company, and my supervisor proposed, why not become a full-time employee? Honestly, I felt more suited to working outside the home than constantly gauging my husband's mood as a homemaker. So, I mustered the courage to discuss this with my family. My daughter cheered, saying, Mom, do your best at work. I'll help with household chores. She was genuinely thrilled. However, my husband remained silent, observing her enthusiasm with a displeased expression. Finally, he spoke, dripping with sarcasm. I suppose this is just a pity offer to make you a regular employee. You'll start complaining soon enough. You should drop the idea. When I insisted. You won't know until I try. He retorted. Oof, I earn enough money anyway. You don't need to be a full-time employee. With our daughter's tuition fees and extracurricular activity costs, we'll never be in financial trouble no matter how much money we have. Unable to counter my argument, he grumbled. Do whatever you want. But don't slack off on household chores. With those words, he stormed off somewhere. Regardless, I was delighted to have persuaded my husband and I couldn't help but share the news with my mother-in-law. She had endured her late domineering husband and became a reliable ally who scolded my husband when necessary. She always cared about me and our daughter, so she was thrilled to hear about my career advancement. As a full-time employee now, I could focus more on work, thanks to my daughter's help with household chores. Consequently, my performance at the company continued to improve. However, my husband, displeased by my apparent enjoyment of work, began treating me worse. His behavior escalated day by day. Hey! There aren't enough side dishes. You need to prepare at least five. There's dust in the corner of the room. Did you skip cleaning? Despite never showing interest in household matters before, he now nitpicked every detail. Little did I know that his company was struggling financially, and his salary had been significantly reduced. I wondered if his harsh treatment toward me was related to his own frustrations. Wanting to lift his spirits, I decided to prepare his favorite seafood gumbo. But when he saw it, his face turned crimson, and he approached me angrily. What's this? I made it to cheer you up since you seemed down lately. Damn it! Is this some kind of mockery toward pathetic me? He shouted at me, pushed me, and then began slamming the pot and ingredients onto the floor. My daughter and I huddled together in a corner, unable to do anything. This is what happens when you anger me. Clean up properly! Then, my husband, who had overturned everything on the table, left the room with a satisfied expression. After that incident, 
my husband started coming home late from work more frequently. When I asked him about it, he explained that he was staying at the office late to study and obtain certifications in hopes of increasing his salary. However, on the days he worked overtime, there was always a distinct shampoo scent that didn't belong to anyone in our household. Could it be? A suspicion crossed my mind, and the word divorce flashed before me, but I couldn't confront my husband. Growing up with a single parent, I had experienced unpleasant situations, so I hesitated to take the step of divorce, especially considering our daughter. However, something changed abruptly. My husband's attitude shifted. On days when he returned early from work, he actively helped with household chores and even assisted our daughter with her homework. The drastic change left me bewildered. Perhaps the company's performance improved, and his salary increased? I wondered. Gradually, I began accepting this transformed version of my husband. One day, something unexpected happened. By the way, didn't you mention wanting to wash the car soon? I'll do it at work, so lend it to me. Oh, I can handle it myself. Don't say that. I've been tough on you because work hasn't been going well, but I'm not saying this makes up for it, but let me take care of the washing. Oh, and I'll do a quick inspection too. I was honestly surprised because he had never made such an offer since we got married. However, when I looked into his sincere eyes, I decided to ask for his help. You need a car for shopping and other things, right? Since the inspection will take about a week, go ahead and use my car during that time. I can manage with my bicycle for commuting and shopping. No, no. Rainy days can be tough for shopping. Use it without hesitation. Given his strong attachment to cars due to his profession, I hesitated to drive his car, fearing any mishaps. Yet, he persistently encouraged me. Despite feeling slightly uneasy about it, I eventually accepted the keys he practically forced upon me. Still, I couldn't bring myself to drive his car, so even after two days of borrowing it, I continued commuting and shopping by bicycle. One day, my mother-in-law visited our home with souvenirs from a trip. Since I had a weekday off, I invited her inside, and we sat down for tea. During our conversation, my mother-in-law mentioned that she wanted to take the souvenirs to a friend who lived in the neighboring town. She asked if she could borrow my car for this purpose. Since my mother-in-law doesn't own a car, she occasionally borrows mine. However, on that particular day, the car available at home was not my usual one, it was my husband's. I explained this to her, but my mother-in-law insisted. It's only about a 30-minute round trip so it'll be fine. She got into my husband's car and drove off. However, an hour passed, and she still hadn't returned. Why hasn't she called? She always does when she's running late. As I waited, wondering if she was engrossed in conversation with her friend, the home phone suddenly rang. When I answered the phone, thinking it might be my mother-in-law, it turned out to be the police. They informed me that my mother-in-law had been driving and mistakenly hit the gas instead of the brake, crashing into a nearby convenience store. Fortunately, there were no casualties, but my mother-in-law was in critical condition and unconscious, taken to the hospital. I immediately tried calling my husband, but he didn't answer. In a panic, I rushed to the hospital. However, the doctor's words there were cruel. This is the turning point tonight. My mind couldn't process the sudden situation, but I knew I had to contact my husband. I called him repeatedly until he finally picked up. However, his response was beyond belief. Why are you unharmed? I was dumbfounded. He quickly backtracked, claiming he was too shaken but his shocking words left me speechless. 
I relayed the hospital's name to him and hung up quietly. Earlier, what was that all about? The suspicion toward my husband lingered in my mind, but there were more pressing matters. Lying on a hospital bed in the emergency treatment room was my mother-in-law, connected to numerous tubes and IVs. Her painful appearance left me speechless. Despite the doctor's diligent efforts, my mother-in-law never regained consciousness and peacefully passed away. She was such a kind soul. The moment I learned of her passing, I collapsed in tears right there. An hour later, my husband arrived at the hospital with our daughter. They, too, sobbed alongside me, mourning the loss of my mother-in-law. I observed from a distance as they grieved, but my attention shifted to my husband's phone, casually placed nearby. Just then, a timely message appeared on the screen, and the short text caught my eye. My heart skipped a beat, did the plan succeed? Indeed, the message explicitly stated that. What is this? What does it mean? Despite my agitation, I wanted to understand the context. So, I pretended nonchalance and handed the phone to my husband. Hey, someone sent you a message. His eyes widened in surprise as he snatched the phone from my hand. Why are you so flustered? His response was evasive. Oh, thanks. It might be something urgent. I'll check it outside. With those words, my husband hurriedly grabbed his phone and left for somewhere. As much as I wanted to tail him, I couldn't leave our still crying daughter behind. The following day. My mother-in-law's funeral was conducted solemnly, and afterward, the police investigation concluded that the cause of her accident remained unknown. Gradually, daily life returned to normal, but I couldn't shake off the nagging feeling about the content of that email from before. So, one day, about a month and a half after the funeral, as the memorial service for my mother-in-law approached, I mustered the courage to check my husband's phone while he slept. However, what I discovered was a horrifying truth. Is it possible that such a gentle soul like her lost her life over something like this? My hand trembled with anger as I resolved to seek revenge against my husband. And so, the memorial service day after my mother-in-law's passing arrived. After the memorial service, my husband sat with relatives at a dinner gathering, reminiscing about memories with my mother-in-law. I watched coldly from the sidelines. As the alcohol flowed, my husband's face turned crimson, and he seemed to notice my gaze. Incoherently, he began to confront me. Hey, what's with that look? Are you secretly glad mom is gone because you disliked her? That's not true. She was always kind to our daughter and me. I respected her. Then why did you lend her my car that day? If you hadn't meddled, she wouldn't have been in that accident. My heartstring snapped at his words. I had blamed myself countless times for that incident, but I couldn't bear hearing it from him. The one who tampered with things to cause the accident is the real culprit here. Ha! Huh? Tampered? What are you talking about? In an attempt to play it off, he chuckled nervously. That's when I thrust my phone screen toward him. Earlier, I had covertly forwarded email exchanges from his phone to mine. Those messages revealed a sinister plan between my husband and his affair partner. They intentionally manipulated the brakes on the unfamiliar car I drove, intending to harm me. The email he received in the hospital, did the plan succeed? was sent by the affair partner. Their ultimate goal was to collect insurance money after my demise and then flee abroad, leaving our daughter behind. Exposing this truth to our relatives, my husband's face was drained of color. He stammered. I thought I'd already deleted the evidence. Why? His panicked outburst confirmed his guilt. Later, 
As relatives bombarded my husband with questions, he stumbled over his answers, unable to provide a coherent response. I watched him with disdain. He lashed out at me, blaming me for everything. Hey! It's all your fault that things turned out like this. Do something! Isn't it all your fault? I'm going to tell the police everything, and you'll face the consequences. As I reached for my phone to report the incident, my husband finally realized the gravity of the situation. Sweat poured down his forehead. Wait! I'm also grieving the loss of my mother, you know! Please don't report me! I'll break up with my affair partner! Mom wouldn't want to see me get arrested by the police! Even if you break up now, it won't bring Mom back! Besides, she'd want you to pay for your actions. Mom would never say that. He lunged at me, but relatives restrained him. I proceeded to make the call. Just before they loaded him into the police car, he tearfully apologized, but my resolve remained unshaken. Afterward, I divorced my husband. The evidence I had became decisive leading to the arrest of both him and his affair partner. Their malicious act of tampering with the car resulted in the loss of a life, and they are now facing approximately 10 years in prison. As for the $20,000 compensation I demanded from them, the affair partner's parents and my ex-husband's relatives each paid their share. When they re-enter the outside world, they'll be expected to repay it. On the other hand, I moved to a slightly distant place with my daughter, starting a new life. Despite our busy schedules with work and studies, we support each other and live happily. How did you find this story? If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing to our channel. Until next time.